Violet Evergarden is one of my favorite anime series ever. It's got a beautiful score, it's gorgeously animated, and has some seriously lovely voice acting in both the sub and the dub. What I want to talk about today, though, is the storytelling structure that it uses, and why that's crucial to making the show as good as it is. Quick rundown of the plot. Violet Evergarden is an ex-soldier who lost her hands in the war. She was conscripted after essentially being a feral child, and has never known anything except killing. After the war, she decides to get a new job in hopes of processing her feelings about the only person who had ever been kind to her, her superior officer, Major Gilbert Bougainvillea. The job she takes is becoming an auto-memories doll, essentially someone who writes letters on behalf of those who can't write their own, for whatever reason. The main character, who has trouble with her feelings, taking a position where she is literally called a doll, is not exactly subtle, but whatever. I bothered to give a plot summary because the structure of the show is inherently tied up in the story that's being told. Instead of linearly telling one tale, one plot event after another, Violet Evergarden is peppered with standalone episodes that are only loosely connected to one another. This structure works and feels natural because of Violet's job, traveling to meet people and write their letters, but it allows for character development in a way that the linear story would not. Story and structure play off each other in a way that wouldn't work if either one were different. Let's look at the episodes laid out to see exactly what I mean. The first episode is entirely about Violet and acclimating to her new life. Hard to call this anything, but anchored in the primary story. The second episode is largely the same, dealing a bit with the other members of Violet's company, but is mostly about her struggle to do anything more than to mechanically type very quickly. Here, we see the first glimmer of the narrative structure, as at the beginning and end of the episode, we have narration from one of the other dolls. Things change, though, when we get to episode 3. Violet is sent away to a school for aspiring auto-memories dolls, but for the first time, the episode isn't really about Violet. Instead, we spend much of the time on one of Violet's classmates, Luculia, and her struggle to connect with her crippled brother. It's almost jarring to go from a story so focused on one person to diving into the life of someone else, until we get to the end of the episode. It's crude and simple, but Violet is able to gain enough insight into Luculia's life to write a letter expressing the other girl's feelings. By spending time away from the main plot and focusing on someone else, Violet is able to take the first baby step towards growing as a person. This general storytelling pattern continues for the rest of the series. Episode 4 follows one of Violet's co-workers, an auto-memories doll named Iris, on a trip back to her hometown. 5 involves writing love letters for a betrothed princess, while 6 is about transcribing academic texts from a library, and 7 is helping a playwright finish a story for his deceased daughter. Each time, Violet is mostly a passive observer, and each time, she learns something new about the human experience. With episode 8, we return to the main plot and learn about Violet's past. She finally learns that her beloved Major is confirmed to have died in the war, and all the progress she made to that point is shattered. She refuses to continue her work as an auto-memories doll, and even contemplates suicide. Her life starts to recover when she once again starts writing letters for people first for a dying mother to her daughter, and then finally for a poor soldier caught behind enemy lines. That last request resolves into Violet stopping a train bombing and eventually properly processing her feelings for the first time. Now, why did I just waste so much time on plot summary? The answer is that I wanted it all laid out, in order, so I could point to how and why this structure works. Violet is the namesake of the show for a reason. The series is all about her and yet it spends so much time away from her personal struggles, focusing on people that often never come up again. The way the series does this calls to mind the concept of a vignette. I like the definition of vignette on LiteraryDevices.net, which reads, A vignette is a small impressionistic scene, an illustration, a descriptive passage, a short essay, a fiction or non-fiction work focusing on one particular moment or giving an impression about an idea, character, setting, mood, aspect, or object. Vignette is neither a plot nor a full narrative description, but a carefully crafted verbal sketch that might be part of some larger work, or a complete description in itself. Often definitions will restrict a vignette to a single scene or something shorter than a full episode of television, but we don't really have a word for these standalone episodes, so that's what I'm going to be using here. 
The basic idea is that a vignette is separated from the rest of the story, with the intent of giving a vivid impression of whatever the passage is focusing on. In the case of Violet Evergarden, the vignette episodes are taking time away from Violet's story to focus on the lives of the people she comes in contact with. Each time we are given a rich, in-depth, often heart-wrenching insight into the personal lives of these people without any context beyond what they choose to share. Beyond these stories being moving in themselves, each vignette represents a separate, powerful emotion about relationships and longing for Violet to learn from. Whether it be a father's grief over his daughter, or someone missing their childhood friend, or nervous young lovers not knowing what to say to each other, each one is an insight into a unique, powerful, and sincerely human feeling, and each experience pushes Violet's understanding just a little further. TV lends itself to standalone episodes in a way other media simply don't. The 20 to 40 minute runtimes, coupled with the generally large number of episodes, means that there's plenty of time to spend on side stories, whereas a movie usually can't afford to spend half an hour of its 90 minute duration to focus on something not connected to the plot. Where Violet Evergarden differs from normal television is how much of its time is spent on these vignette episodes. Depending on how you count it, six to eight of the 13 episodes in the series are spent away from the primary story. That's kind of a breathtaking ratio. I should note here that I'm specifically talking about drama television. Comedy is often the opposite, with most episodes being standalone, self-contained stories, and longer plot lines being few and far between. Some TV, like Kino's Journey or Katanagatari, choose to have the vignettes be the main plot, with the protagonist meeting a new person nearly every episode before moving on and never seeing them again. This is outside the norm, but what Violet Evergarden is doing isn't quite the same. Brace yourselves for a wild comparison, because I actually think the storytelling structure of Violet Evergarden is most similar to the 90s sci-fi mystery drama, The X-Files. The X-Files follows a pair of FBI agents investigating paranormal events, and it became well known for abandoning the main plot frequently in favor of Monster of the Week episodes. The vast government conspiracy covering up the existence of aliens can wait as we spend a whole week investigating werewolves or satanic cults. Similar to Violet Evergarden, you almost never see the side characters from these episodes again, and the only connection to the main plot is that our protagonists were involved. The structure was the same, but the function was significantly different. In my opinion, the main purpose of Monster of the Week episodes is just to keep things interesting. You never know at the start of an episode what you're in for this time. This adds to the air of mystery and the unknown, because the audience never gets to settle into, ah, uh, it'll just be aliens again. However, at the end of each episode, the whole thing might as well have never happened, because Mulder and Scully always come away from it the same as they were before. The experience of watching is interesting in the moment, but there's no real emotional weight, as these episodes never have any real stakes. This is where Violet Evergarden does something special. The only thread connecting all these vignette episodes is the character of Violet herself, and each of these experiences is another chance to grow. We get the emotional fulfillment of a self-contained 23-minute story, but the development of Violet's character lets these otherwise disconnected episodes build on one another and feel like part of a connected whole. Another show I've already talked about on this channel that does this effectively is Avatar The Last Airbender. I've long held that one of the strongest aspects of Avatar is that what would be called filler episodes in other shows are the best part. The Painted Lady has nothing to do with the main plot and doesn't move it along at all, but it does make clear what a fiercely caring and empathetic person Katara is. Only by being willing to stray from the primary story can we get these vignettes full of rich character development. And even then, Avatar has maybe a dozen of these across a 61-episode series, nowhere near the ratio that Violet Evergarden has. It's kind of a funny contrast. The structure is chaotic to an extent well beyond the normal beach episode divergence, but it works because the series overall has such a laser focus. The disparate plotlines coalesce into a coherent show that only has one thing on its mind develop the character of Violet Evergarden, and watch as she learns to understand and express herself. The result is a series that gets to do so much while still feeling like a tight, cohesive narrative. If you like this sort of analysis content, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel, and make sure you see all my new stuff as it comes out.
That's all for today. Thanks for watching.